Hey everyone! So, a while back, I showed you guys how to make a mounted deer head, where I made a deer head in a 3D program, I ran it through a paper craft program, and it made a pattern for you guys to print out, so you can piece it together and make your own. It was kind of like a big puzzle, a 3D puzzle no less, and I'll admit it can be a little difficult. After I made that, a few people asked me if I could show how to make different animals. So I really wanted to put together a video showing you guys how to make different mounted heads, but in a way where you won't need like a paper craft pattern like in the deer head. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a mounted unicorn head. And this method that I'm using, you could adjust it any way you want to make any kind of animal you want. You just kind of have to alter however you're sculpting. You'll see what I mean when I get into it. And the one that I'm making is kind of small. I was jokingly calling it like a pygmy unicorn head, but it's easily scalable. So yeah, let's get started. To make the unicorn bust, you'll need a wooden plaque, a sawtooth picture hanger, a tube of cardboard. For the size that I'm making, a toilet paper tube worked well. Cardboard, scissors, packing tissue or newspaper, masking tape, paper clay, I still had some store-bought paper clay left over from a previous project, so I just used that. But if you wanted to make some of your own, I'll leave a link to the DIY stuff that I made somewhere on the screen and down below. School glue, some dowel, since I'm making a smaller bust, I used a thin dowel, sandpaper, and whatever you want to decorate it. I decided to try out the whole CD mosaic thing, and I also used some wood stain for the plaque. To do the CD mosaic, you'll need CDs and or DVDs. Supposedly CDs work, I couldn't get them to work, so I just went with DVDs, and I'll explain that later. A utility knife, scissors, and black E6000. On the back of the wooden plaque, find the center and nail the sawtooth hanger about an inch or so down from the top. Take the cardboard tube and cut the bottom at an angle so it sits flush against the plaque like this. Trace this newly cut edge onto some cardboard, cut the oval out, and tape that onto the end. Crumple some packing, tissue, or newspaper into a ball and use masking tape to keep it in shape. Cut the other end of the tube to make it so that the head angles down like this and tape it on. I actually didn't like the angle that this was sticking out, so I added a little bit of cardboard back to the bottom to adjust the angle of the tube. Make a smaller ball, and like before, use masking tape to keep it in shape. Take one of the scrap pieces of the cardboard tube that you cut previously and use it to form the bridge of the nose like so, and again, tape it in place. Now use the paper to build up any areas that are too thin. I beefed up the neck a little bit. Cut a piece of dowel however long you want the horn to be, plus like one or two inches. For this size of bust, I cut it to be about six or seven inches. Use a file or sandpaper or even a pencil sharpener and make one end come to a point. Poke a hole into the forehead of the bust and stick the dowel in with the pointy part facing outwards. Use tape to hold it in place. Cut two squares of cardboard that are about as tall as you want the ears to be, plus about half an inch extra. With the corrugation running up and down, cut a thin V in the middle, about halfway up like this. Then cut the edges at a slight curve so they come to a point like this. Fold in half and tape the gap together. Cut a V into the head where you want the ears to go. Push the ears in and tape them in place. Now take your paper clay and start smoothing it over the bust, giving as much or as little detail as you want for the form. Since I was going to cover it with mosaic, I decided to settle somewhere in the middle. I went on Google and found some images of horse muscular anatomy, and I used that as a reference as I did this part. I decided to let this layer dry before I worked on the horn so I wouldn't misshape anything. And when I came back to it, I decided the neck still wasn't quite big enough, so I added some more clay. To help stick it to the dry clay, I used some white school glue. To cover the horn, I rolled a long, thin snake of clay and then coiled it around the dowel, adding a little bit of school glue again at the base. I decided I wanted a little more of a realistic looking horn, so I smoothed the clay out and then twisted it, which actually worked pretty well. And then I added a mane. I couldn't decide exactly how I wanted the hair to look, so I just kept adding clay and playing with it until 
I finally ended up with this. I also took this time to add a little more detail to the eyes and to smooth some areas out. Let everything dry. Now you can go back and sand areas, add more clay, etc. until you've achieved your desired look. But I was just going to cover it with mosaic like I mentioned earlier, so I didn't bother getting it super smooth. Position the bust wherever you want it on your plaque and trace around the base. Mark in about 1 fourth to half an inch and then finish the wood however you'd like, leaving the middle raw. Glue sticks much better to raw wood since it's porous. Anyway, I coated mine with a layer of wood stain. Seal the clay with some acrylic sealer or a layer of paint. I ended up painting it white all over. Anyway, like I mentioned earlier, I got a request to do a CD mosaic project and I decided that this project would look pretty cool like that. So then my long journey of trying to get this to work started. I had a stack of CDRs and I proceeded to try cutting them up, but that proved difficult. Well, cutting the CDs was fine, but the holographic film on them, which is the whole reason you're using CDs in the first place, started to flake off. I did some research and tried to do the methods people suggested. Coat the film side of the CD with school glue before cutting, didn't work. Let the CD sit in hot water for a few minutes before cutting, didn't work. Boil the CD for a few minutes, didn't work. Use a utility knife instead, didn't work. Use better scissors, didn't work. I was just about to throw in the towel and just paint the unicorn head and revisit the CD thing later, but then I decided to try using a DVD. And it ended up working pretty well, so that's what I ended up using. I think that maybe my problem was that I was using CDRs instead of commercially pressed CDs, but that's just my guess. I'm sure some of you have done this successfully, so please leave some tips in the comments to help educate me and other viewers. I found that when I cut a DVD, it actually split into two halves. The initial cut gets kind of ruined, but from there, you can split the DVD and then continue cutting much easier since the plastic is half as thick. If you're extremely careful, before you even cut into it, you can use a utility knife to pry the layers apart at the edge so you don't have to mess up part of the DVD with the first cut. Cut around the DVD like so, and then go in and cut around the middle and you'll have a bunch of wedge pieces like this. From there, you can cut them down as much as you'd like. You're probably going to have plastic shards flying off everywhere, so be careful and wear eye protection. I also found that sometimes I could just break the pieces off. Since my bust was pretty small, I cut the DVD into small pieces. Using the E6000, start gluing the mosaic pieces onto the bust, spacing them about 1 8 to 1 4 of an inch apart. I actually didn't even realize that I had grabbed black E6000. In fact, I didn't even know that that existed. So it was really weird when I opened this tube up and it was black and not clear. But it ended up being awesome because it gave me the look of grout and the black just looks really nice with the darker holographic of the DVD. My initial plan was just to have the clear E6000 in between the shards so that the white base would show through and it would kind of look like grout. And then if that looked bad, I was going to go back and meticulously paint around each shard. Yeah. So I was pretty happy with the black E6000. Work in sections because the E6000 cures sort of fast. In the very least, it forms a skin which makes it pretty difficult to stick the DVD pieces onto if you take too long. Initially, I wanted to paint the horn with liquid gold. Of course, you guys know me and how much I love that stuff. But as I started placing the mosaic, I decided that the gold wouldn't look that great. So I decided to just do glossy black instead. And then I realized it was going to be a pain in the butt to try to get the mosaic pieces into the nostrils, eyes, ears, and detail of the mane. So I went through and painted those parts glossy black as well, and then I continued on with the mosaic. About halfway through, I realized that it was starting to remind me of Butt Stallion, so I decided to go all in and make it a bust of her. For those of you who don't know, Butt Stallion is a diamond unicorn that Handsome Jack from the video game Borderlands owns. Once I finished with the mosaic, I mixed up a light bluish purple with some pearlescent acrylic inks and painted her mane. Spread some E6000 over the base of the bust and glue it onto the plaque. Let that cure 
and then you're done. I am so happy with how this turned out, and I'm glad that my stubbornness won so that I ended up figuring out a way to do the CD DVD mosaic thing. It just looks so cool. I hope you all enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. Thank you to my patrons who helped me produce this video. If you're interested in becoming a patron or just learning about what being a patron is, I'll leave a link to my Patreon right here and you can go check it out. I post... I post little vlogs every week, kind of going through what projects I'm working on that week and stuff like that. Uh, little updates. So yeah, again, a link will be right here over the cast. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, or Snapchat, and I'll leave a link to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Hey guys, welcome to the Patreon vlog. Sorry last week's was kind of low energy.